I am Candace, a licensed professional counselor, and you are watching Insight of New England's Therapeutic Talk. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Hello, today I have two very, very, very special guests, uh, Josephine and Daniel Danielson. Um, they are going to talk about the work that they are doing. Uh, she is a model. She's been a model since she was 16 years old, and now um, she has her own fashion line. Um, and these are some of the photos from her fashion line with her husband. Um, she has done a lot of work um, in the industry, and um, she's going to talk about that and give some advice to people. And this is her daughter, who is also a model. Um, she's very beautiful. Um, and this is another photo of her. Um, you probably remember Daniel Danielson from um, a prior video, um, Black Privilege, White Power, um, which is a movie that um, he screen wrote. And um, they also had a web series, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy. Hi, my name is Josephine <laughs> West Danielson. I'd like to say that I'm a retired fan fashion model. I mean, I've uh, been doing it since I was 16. Um, I really, I don't know, like when I was 16, I was obviously really deeply into it. I'm from Philadelphia. I got a lot of opportunities and uh, I've realized that my place needed to be in New York because that's where all the work was, where all the castings, the go sees when my agents would page me, that's how long ago that was. Uh, they'd be like, you know, get to this casting. And I'm like two hours away. So I realized that I had to be in New York to work. So um, yeah, um, the funny thing is when I started modeling, it was very hard and exclusive. And being that I'm five, 10 and a half, I was fortunate because uh, you they would not accept anyone under that. And like, you couldn't even be well, I mean, five nine was the cutoff, but they were really strict about that. They would measure you, like, you know, take your height. Nowadays, they're really flexible about it. My daughter, who just started at 16, she um, she's only five, seven and a half. I call her like a little one. But thank God she still has growing to do. I'm praying she gets an extra two inches. I'm praying for those two inches. But to be honest with you, it doesn't seem to matter nowadays, which is pretty cool. It's not so hard and so exclusive. They kind of opened it. To even think girls have braids. I'm just like, what? When I was younger, I loved braids. And, and man, when it came to modeling, they were like, uh, no. <laughs> you had to have like just a, you know, chocolate Barbie. You just had to have the European straight, you know. They didn't care yeah. for that ethnic, you know. Yeah. So now it's, I love it now. I think it's great that they're just uh, really flexible and they accept people to be more like, real instead of chocolate barbies you can actually look african-american and it's okay they embrace it especially at this point diversity is huge so i'm right. really happy to see the change in our industry i'm really happy about that yeah oh that's yeah i'm glad to hear that too so you think that it's more it's not as racist as it was so. exactly i yeah. think they're more actually to be honest with you i was in times square the other day because i work in the fashion district um garment district now i'm on the other side so i do um sales with a woman's clothing line the funny thing is my agent sent me there my modeling agent sent me for a casting and i ended up mentioning to them that i have experience in wholesales and because i just came from another modeling client that gave me a job as a wholesaler at my age again there's a you know thank god i'm exposed to other uh aspects of the industry so not just modeling so the cool thing is now I do sales for this um, clothing line and I'm on the cover of the catalog. So it's kind of cool when you deal with customers, they're like, oh my God, that's you. And it's like, yeah, sometimes they call me in to do the catalog. So that's a benefit that you could, <laughs> you know, be uh, representing your actual product. Mm -hmm. and, and then I have my clothing line with my husband. So that's really cool to be the designer. And yeah. then we had a fashion show last year and, and it was so funny to be cast. Like we were at the model casting and I have my old way of thinking, like you have to be a certain height and blah, blah, blah. But the truth is our clothing line is for curvier women. So that's pretty cool. And, and yeah, it was, it was a different, it was fun to be on the other side of the fashion industry because I grew up as a model. In the industry. Yeah. And is that growing too, like the curve, the curvier models? That's like growing. 
more popular too. One hundred percent. That's yeah. so in right now. I'm in motion. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's good. <laughs> So um, do you have like any advice maybe for young girls who maybe want to get into the industry? Uh, yeah, um, persistency is everything. Like I said, my daughter, she is 16 and she just started in the industry. Like she did some when she was like 12 years old, but it was more so through me because I was still kind of doing my thing at that time. I never thought I'd be modeling at 38 and I was doing quite a bit of work. And um, so to get her experience, I would bring her and say, oh, like if the designer wants to use me, like if it was a, through a friend, I'm like, because I was more retired and I was seasoned and I expected good money. But if they were new designers and they couldn't afford me, I'd say, listen, if my daughter can walk, you know, in the show as well, then I'll do it. So I was trying to get her practice because it does take to get comfortable in front of the camera and to be comfortable on the runway. Unfortunately, when you first start, you have to try to do some freebies uh, unless you want to pay for some modeling classes, which I've never, I don't believe in those things just because we learn how to walk at one years old. It's a natural thing. I don't need you to teach me to walk. I understand that you do have to build confidence. So that's why you just, there's so many young designers that can't afford agency models. So I say, go try to do those free shows, get your practice experience build your portfolio, shoot with new photographers. It's very expensive nowadays. So um, my daughter, she has an agent and her agent like um, sets her up with photographers that are established so that she could start building her book with like photos. You need quality photos to, you know, to compete with other models. You can't have like, someone can't just take you in the backyard and snap some shots. Like when you're first right. starting to get in an agent, you, you do use snapshots in the beginning, like to submit to the agency. So okay. I just recommend to invest a lot of your time to focus research. You know, Google is your best friend. When you're new, like starting back with my daughter, it felt all brand new again. I didn't know that in New York State, they passed a law that you have to be at least 18 years old to do runway for photographer, for um, designers, like the top designers. Um, I was talking to Society Model Management or Society New York, which is one of the biggest ones. They're under the umbrella of um, elite. And the, the vice president was saying, you have to be at least 18. It's a new law. So just so models know, when you're like 16 or 18, you can submit for agents, but they kind of hold on to you until 18 where you can legally do like some traveling and some work. But here in New York mm -hmm. State, you can't walk for like Prada or Hermes or any of the really, you say it more any of the really big ones. They're not taking unless you're 18. They, which I think is cool. They want to wait for kids to get out of school. They want you to yeah. have your high school life and to be more responsible. So I think that's pretty cool. But, you know, back when I started, you could be 15 on the runway, but not anymore. So like you could do small runways. That's what to get your experience. Do the like not famous <laughs> designers do those. There's so many, especially in New York, but it's great because we're all helping each other. It's mutually beneficial. You know, they get a model, you get your experience in. So, it's all about confidence and yeah, you know, just petition yeah yep <laughs> google your best friend that's my advice google google don't waste your time with um people trying to take your money there's a lot of fraud i probably did like one or two when i first started at 16 i didn't know and like my dad drove me across the state to do some model search america it was some ripoff you know oh well you know they brought they said that they'll bring like top agencies to you and they pick you out of all these people. So you feel special. But by the time we got over there, I realized, because I was in Pennsylvania, I could have went to New York two hours away for free and met all the agencies. Back then, they had open call. Now, because of COVID, they don't. Like, they do submission online. But, um, yeah, don't waste your money. If anything's asking for money, it's a ripoff. Not unless they're asking you to shoot with their photographer. That's definitely a good investment. You can't go wrong when you're paying for a photographer because you want quality photos. So that's the only thing I would say, yeah, spend your money on that. Some agents want you to spend to be on their database. I'm not too fond of that. Um, MMG models, not to blow them up, but they've been trying to get me to sign my daughter up on their database, like $500. Like, why? Like, they were like, oh, we could put her on Actors Access. Like, we'll handle that expense and casting network. 
but they were like, uh, for our personal database, you got to pay. And I don't know what that's about. So I'm like, yeah, okay, just wait by the payphone, as Daniel says. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm going to give you $500. <laughs> yeah, you can try to get her work. But, you know, once you get her that's work, money I don't on mind. the photos, not other things. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the yeah. database come on it shouldn't cost you know it should be a free streaming service I, I don't know I mean you do pay for actors access and casting networks but thank god they were like oh we cover that so I guess there's some flat rate because even our agents have us rolled enrolled on a, that right Daniel your agent have you on actors access right and casting networks so yeah modeling agencies are now doing that that's something new so I guess they're taking their time and submitting you for things those are um, the websites that you that we use to book work for acting. Like, uh, back in the day, classified ads, so, sort of. So now, you know, everything is online. So there's particular websites for where you go to book um, industry work. So Casting Networks is a actor's model, uh, you know, um, commercial print, commercials, TVs, um, background work, um, stuff like that, voiceover, even um, what's the thing, audio books. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you get your photos and your media presence, uh, you know, a, a, a website uh, for, for voiceover, I have um, audio reels. So once you have those things, go to casting networks or actors access and you create a pro relative they're affordable like yeah. i think casting networks is about like 25 dollars a month yeah so that's and worth it yeah the actors access is like 70 dollars a year yeah because you make your money back on your first job but yeah, you know so and agents use it so that tells you something if an yeah, agent if a real agency is using it so it's a network where you have the casting companies on one part the agencies are connected also into the network and then the us as the um, talent is connected into the network and they're all together so you'll get a message from a casting director that says hey listen we want you to show up for a nike commercial on thursday you know or you'll get a message from your agent saying listen we contacted nike and they want to see you on thursday however but once you get your media the photos in particular you're ready to go but if you don't have that in order there's no need to go join the network because you're shooting yourself in the foot because the casting director on the other side is looking through photos for the person, you know, once the once Nike contacts them, the client, and says, look, we need four people for basketball director starts going through the network to see who's there that they can call in to audition. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a, you know, in the day and age yeah. of technology, it's a really cool process because you can now, we can now just do it on the phone. So we'd be on the subway and we're submitting. Submitting, yeah. yeah. Of course it helps when you have an agent submit you because for some reason certain, certain castings we don't see, hmm. right, Daniel? Like an agent would see something that, you know, they don't give to the general public. Right. So yeah. that's why it's always good to have an agent referring you because they get the they, they get sometimes more because you get we get quality stuff too that a regular person. Well, it's usually you get sort of the lower budget commercials and sort of uh, you know like uh, independent kind of stuff. And then as you move on and you can then showcase the work that you've done, you kind of get higher and higher. And then they have agents who work with new new people, new talent. And then they have agents like William Morris and. ICM and Gersh and all those who work with the top talent. So it's uh, it's sort of a, uh, you know, a tier. Uh, but you get lucky sometimes. Like, how about that time you got yourself casted on, um, what was it? It was a big, what was yeah, it? Mr. Robot, the first Mr. Robot. That was your first big TV gig. You submit it yourself. So yeah. that, that doesn't happen a lot. That's a rare thing. But the, the thing is, being in the vicinity, like to sign up on this network is totally worth it. Because you yeah, do so have you exposure. Have yeah, so you had to be prepared. So I had all my photos ready. I had a photo in a cop uniform and they were looking for a correctional officer. So I was able to submit for the correction officer because I had the photo of me in a cop uniform. I'm mm -hmm. six four. You know, they were looking for a bigger type of person. Yeah. Yeah. When you have your and you it, when everything comes together, like you know, opportunities and you know, um, preparation when it comes together, there 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 it is. So
Yeah, what's that saying? When something meets preparation, it's Operation, uh, opportunity meets preparation. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so be prepared. Google's your best friend, like I said. Yeah. <laughs> because without, without one or the other, then you don't get to success. The success yeah. comes when the two come together. So I'm, right now, I have, even while we're doing this, I have my phone here. And like, uh, I just finished doing an audition and I have the phone set up ready just in case the computer does something funny. I can just pull up the phone and I'm ready to go. So I just did an audition for a TV show right here. This, this, this is my setup. I have the blue wall for the studio. I got the light. I love his setup. It's so yeah. great. And, and your tie the back matches the background. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, He's and ready, right? Room. Preparation. Yep. Yeah, I have the microphone set up. I've got a little sound enclosure for the microphone. Um, it's I a have a studio. A, yeah, there's a program that we use um, that connects you to, I, I can talk to California and, and record a commercial. I'll record a commercial in the house now. With COVID, we don't go to the studio anymore. You have to have all this stuff in your house. You don't have to, but if you don't have it, then you're not prepared to miss out. So like I said, for preparation and opportunity, when they come together, equals success. Yep. And I don't have to go to the mailbox to get the check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you want to talk about Any more your, questions? Uh, your fashion line? Maybe. So when did you start designing? So we started the clothing line Trendstar. Uh, I'd say about three or four years ago. Um, you know, it wasn't that long. Yeah, it's been that long. We, we started, um, I'd say 20, 2018, I think 2018. Yeah, because- Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, so a lot of back and forth and, and sort of deciding what we were going to do and you know um, back and forth with shipping overseas and getting the side overseas. Mm -hmm. And of course they use the metric system. So when we would try to get like and adjust the sizes, it was difficult because we're saying inches and they're saying centimeters. And yeah, it was complicated. Um, so a lot of times we would just we would make the garment, then we would bring it to the tailor in um, downtown and then send it overseas. So the, the garment yeah. was already pre-fit to her. I had a sample, yeah. I was yeah, the that medium. Way we didn't have to explain <laughs> all so the either a two inches up or two a medium. So I worked fine. <laughs> yeah. And then we like she said, we did the fashion show right before COVID. Um, oh man yeah it was so good too we were just yeah. finally getting our products our samples and then COVID came in yeah. did its thing yeah. <laughs> right now we, we we have our signature line the newspaper print line and that's at um trendstarnyc.com and so we've been doing doing good and um and big recently in a store in atlanta no detroit sorry Detroit. yeah our first wholesale sale so that's what we're, we're looking that's for in the store Woo -hoo. yeah <laughs> yeah it's awesome so there as a matter of fact he's got a call back this morning I talked to him yesterday he says he likes it he was he was asking for more larger size we have small medium large he was asking yeah. for extra large and 2x so we'll work on that. Um, a lot. Of, so I'll send you some photos and some videos of that. A lot of people are asking for. It. We don't have it yet. Our but, samples um, were plus size. We were gaining. We were actually gearing towards plus size women. Remember Daniel at first. Yeah. And even in our runway show, we had two plus size models. Yeah. yeah for so our photos, was, our first photo shoot, she was plus size. Yes. Yeah, so right? the difficulty came with communications overseas during COVID. So communicating with China was a little difficult. So how we were able to circumvent, we hired a um, translator. A translator. So that helped us a lot. So it, that was much later on in the process where we hired a translator. So she does all the communicating with the factory over in China, and that's very helpful. Very so, helpful. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, if ever you want to do business overseas, get a translator. Yeah. <laughs> Not unless you study Mandarin. <laughs> helpful <laughs> yeah. to the trade show in atlanta and um we'll see what happens hopefully we'll get into the show we'll see you know if not 
we'll still be working to for the spring and the summer to you know showcase our line and get it out there. People are supporting and sort of sending messages and and talking about it, so we're excited about it. So yeah, that's the first leg, and then. Once we finish selling the signature line, we'll come back in the fall. We have some nice plaid patterns and uh, a couple of nice designs that we think people will enjoy. We're really excited. We're doing retail and wholesale. So that's pretty yeah. cool for your first line. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's exciting. It's hard. <laughs> but you know, that's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you guys are so, you guys are so interesting. <laughs> So many things like your fashion, oh, your right. acting. You didn't even hear about our movie. <laughs> movie. You didn't hear about the film that Daniel's working on. Huh? Yeah, we you have no movie. idea. We had a TV series. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She, you know, we talked about the film last time, but we. She, oh, okay. She, she didn't know about Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Jackson. That, that, that was for another situation. I got, <laughs> oh. I got an award for that. Yeah, we got an award for um for a uh, costume award, wardrobe. Yeah. Mr. and yeah. Mrs. Jackson. It was really? very okay. fashionable and yeah, pop music. Yeah, that it was, was a pop song. We made a, we wrote and produced a six part mini series uh, called Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. It was oh, based off awesome. of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but we're in the hood. So it's two okay. undercover agents in the hood, you know, with a bunch of different characters, some Jamaicans and Puerto Ricans and, you know, a bunch of different characters that were really fun to, um, to act and direct and just, you know, be a part of. So it was, it was a really good opportunity. Mm -hmm. What was our hashtag? Crime and crime fight in the hood never looked so good. Yeah. <laughs> big screening. <laughs> it was such a big deal. 2019. It was the year we got married and then the screening was like oh. a few months before our wedding. It was crazy. How many people showed? 500, 400 something? 500. We almost sold out every seat. And we shared the theater with um, Ava DuVernay. She was um, screening when they see us. So all our um, guests, they ran over to meet the cast. And when they see us, it's like, hey, guys, we're here for us. <laughs> but it was such an honor to just be in the same theater as Ava. It was like, wow, we're doing something right. <laughs> yeah. Aww. So, you know, we'll have to keep you posted as we, yeah, as we move yeah, forward. Update. Uh, yeah, keep thanks. updating. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having us. We really yes, thank so you. much for joining. <laughs> I'm glad I finally got to meet you <laughs> soon. Okay, well, thank you very much. Bye. Yeah, Bye. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye.